Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another GM4 video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the latest release of G4 Brems. So at this point in the G4 Brems project, it's basically completely done. Um, the things I change in this release is instead of trying to detect the Bremster lung with outer detectors, I figured out that you can actually track secondary particles right when they get generated. All right, guys, so once you have the source code downloaded and extracted, you can open it here in Visual Studio. And I'll show you guys real quick how to build the program from the command line. So here I'm in a developer PowerShell right here. So first we're going to make a build directory. So you make your build, then change into that directory. Okay, so we're in the build directory. Now we just run cmake dot dot. So as long as that CMake worked for you, clear this out, and then we'll just, um, let's find what file we're trying to make. It's called g4brems.sln. Perfect. So just run ms build g4brems.sln. And now it's just compiling that project for us. Okay, perfect. So the build succeeded with zero errors, so that's nice. So now we can look in this directory and we now have a release directory. So I'm going to change into the release. And here we have all these files. The one that I want is g4brems.exe. So I'm going to dot slash, whoops, dot slash g4brems. And it should open the project for us. Okay, so a couple of differences from last time. Now the only detector is just the tungsten target. The reason why is because I figured out how to record all the energies without having any external detectors. So all we have to do to make this run is just run the command run, beam on, and then we do, let's try 10 particles just for now. And as you can see, shoots the particles from over here on the left, and we see on the right, some Bremstrel and created. Now let's run a little bit of a bigger simulation. Let's do like a thousand. So do run, beam on 1000. Perfect, it finished that run and that's a lot of particles that we saw generated. So now if we go into our actual folder, we go into our build and our release directory. As you can see, we have this new file that got generated called energy spectrum. So this is a root data file. So assuming you have root downloaded, you can double click on this. It'll pop up a browser for you. And then if you go into this folder right here, it will give you two data files. You have absolute energy and relative energies. So if we go here to absolute energy, this is a graph of all the absolute photon energies. Um, as you can see, it goes from zero to around six MeV. And most of them are around zero MeV. And then if we go to relative energy, this is the photon energies relative to the electron that created them. So just to show you guys why I have these two graphs, if we run one particle, so as you can see, this particle created two Bremsstrahlung photons. So let's zoom way in on this interaction. As you can see, the electron started here on the right, and it already scattered quite a few times before it even generated that first photon. So the absolute energy is going to grab that energy of that photon, as well as this photon over here. But the relative energy takes the energy of the electron at this point right here before it creates that photon and divides this energy of the photon by that initial electron energy. All right, guys, so now we're going to walk through the code, and I'm going to show you guys how I managed to track the energy of those secondary particles. So a brief overview, we have our action initialization, which is pretty basic. We just set all our user actions in here. We have our detector construction, which is also pretty basic. All it does is it creates a world and just creates the single tungsten target. Our physics list that just registers the EM standard physics. We have our primary generator action, which all it does is it creates a beam of six MeV electrons. We have our run action, which all this does is it creates our output file and it sets up some n-tuple graphs for our absolute energy and our relative energy. It also creates a timer 
So it will print how long the simulation took, which is kind of nice. All right, guys, so the real meat of this program where all the action happens is here in the stepping action class. So in the G4 user stepping action class, we have the option to use this function, user stepping action. And basically what this function does is it lets us apply our own logic to the steps in GN4. So to give a quick example, so I'm gonna draw my GN4 world. Here's our Bremsterlung target. And then during a run, we generate a particle over here. It's going to start moving this way in a trajectory. So GN4 separates the trajectory into small steps. So this is like step one, step two, step three. And it keeps going. And the function user stepping action, you can apply some logic to a step. So back to the code. My first logic that I did is I checked if the step was inside the Brems volume. So the Brems volume is this tungsten target, right? So first things first, we had to get the Brems volume. We do this by accessing the run manager singleton, and we can find the user detector construction from the singleton. Then we use this function called get Brems volume, which I created in the detector construction. Here in the detector construction header file, I created this function, get Brems volume, which just returns the Brems volume, which is that tungsten target. So back to here, we set the Brems volume here. And then during the stepping action, we have to get the current volume. If it's not the Brems volume, we're just gonna quit the function here and return. So here on the picture, basically what would happen is in these first couple steps, it's just gonna return and quit the function really fast. But once it gets inside here, all of a sudden it's inside our Brems volume. And so it's going to be able to pass this line right here. So then we move on to our second check on the trajectory, which is checking if the particle generated any secondary particles. So we can do this by using the steps function called get number of secondaries in current step. So for example, in this step, it was zero. And let's say it's scattered, it's still zero. It's scattered again, it's still zero. And let's say that on this scatter, all of a sudden it created a Bremsstrung photon. All of a sudden the number of secondaries generated in this step right here is gonna be not zero, at least one, maybe two or three as well. So if the particle does generate some Bremsstrung, we're gonna skip this line and we're gonna move on. So the first thing I do after this check is I get the energy of the electron that actually created that Bremsstrung. The reason why I did that is when we make the relative energy graph, we want to get the energy of the photon relative to the electron that created it. So the reason why I had to do this is because here at the beginning of the trajectory, the electron has six MeV energy. But once it gets inside this detector, every time it scatters, it's going to lose a little bit of energy. So let's say it didn't create a Bremsstrung until this point right here. This electron energy is no longer 6 MeV. It's, it's a lot less. So I got the electron energy by using this function, get kinetic energy of the step point. Then I'm going to get a list of all the secondaries created in that step. So the reason I have to get it as this list or vector right here is because sometimes multiple secondary particles can be generated at one time. So I use this function, get secondary in current step, and that's going to return a list of all the particles that got generated. So in our example here, let's say that at this point where it created Bremsstrung, it created several particles, then all of these particles would be added to this vector of G4 track objects. So now that we have our Bremsstrung and our electron energy saved, we are going to add them to our analysis. So first thing I did was I got the IDs of my n-tuples. I set these in the run action class here. So we created a column called absolute energy, which is ID zero. And then we created a relative energy column, which is ID of one. So I saved those here. Then we're gonna loop through all the secondaries and we're gonna add them to the analysis manager. So to do this first, we're gonna loop through our list of secondaries. We're gonna get each secondary and we're gonna check the particle name. The reason why we do this is because with with shooting electrons, sometimes it can create positrons. And I wanted to filter out the positrons 
because I wanted to focus just on the photons. So we have this check here. If the particle name is gamma, we're going to do this block. If it's not, we're just going to skip it and not add it to our analysis. But let's say the particle is a photon, then we're going to get its energy using this get kinetic energy function of the track object. Then we're going to record it two times. First, the absolute energy of the photon. And then the second one is we're recording the relative energy. Now, this is the energy of the photon divided by the electron energy that created it. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's this new release of G4 Brems. If you guys enjoyed this video or if it benefited you to learn how to track those secondary particles um, in GM4, please leave a like or feel free to click one of those links down below to support me and my work. So good luck on your GM4 coding and I'll see you later. Thank you.